full board. And the first order of business is a motion to approve the agenda. I'll, I'll make the motion. Motion by Nate, second. Happy I'll second the motion. Second by Jessica. Yes. Yes. All those in favor? <clears throat> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Public comment. Is there any public comment? All right. Seeing none, we will move on to the new business, and I'm going to turn that over um, to Chris. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, I thank you all for giving up another evening here. I know that uh, when I was speaking with Lisa about uh, graduation, there are a couple concerns, uh, particularly around funding, that some of the building principals had uh, brought to our attention just with, you know, that we had kind of put a moratorium on fundraisers for the year. And as we were looking at potential of end of year dances or proms and typically junior classes would hold them, uh, you know, Lisa had said that there would be a discussion obviously for the board if we were gonna look at uh, additional funding. And then as we uh, looked to build out a schedule, I thought it might be a good time to just kind of review some of the guidance that we received from the AOE as well as the Department of Health that kind of, you know, gives us the parameters from which we work when we build out these plans. And uh, so I have, I have 10 short slides I'll share with you in just a second. And after that, we, if we, want, we can obviously answer questions. We can also have uh, the building administrators kind of share some of their thoughts, what they're looking at doing with regard to uh, their graduation uh, uh, promotion ceremonies, as well as the end of year dances or proms or you know senior banquets or things along those lines. All right, so uh, give me just a second and I'll share my screen with you. So can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, so a lot of the information you see here tonight is taken directly from the information that can be found on the AU, AOE website as well as Department of Health. So this is gonna be nothing new. This is nothing that I am privy to that no one else is. This is all public information that any one of us on the call can go right to the uh, AOE website and download this information. But I just wanted to kind of you know, just consolidate it put it here and just, uh, you know, for us to kind of see it one nice neat package. So uh, all GRCSU end of year gathering celebrations, graduations will be held in a manner consistent with both the strong and healthy year guidance and the gatherings and events provisions of the Vermont forward plan. Uh, that is important just for us to remember because, you know, since the beginning of the year, we have been following the guidance closely as we've moved, you know, throughout the school year, we look at, you know, sports, other activities uh, that has been kind of the, um, you know, the, the, our, our guiding lights. And I think as we're looking at, you know, finishing the year off with these uh, ceremony things along the lines, we're not going to kind of lose the, uh, lose our direction. So we are going to follow, you know, the guidance, you know, th through the end. Uh, I do know that we're also entering kind of a, an interesting period of the year where, you know, as we see with the uh, Vermont Forward Plan, you know, we have the four steps, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, you know, July 4th, you know, something magical happens, uh, you know, that, you uh, Everything, I guess, goes away or gets better, but uh, we are uh, currently in step two, uh, and I'll kind of go through that, what that means for us. Uh, and step three is what it take more of a prominence for us. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Uh, sorry, my Siri went off. So uh, so step two right now, uh, we are at the Vermont Forward Plan. Uh, as you see that there is restriction around indoors and outdoors. This really will not impact our end of the year uh, ceremonies or graduation. I know I'm talking about the building principals. Most of our plans are uh, events or will happen after uh, June 1st. Uh, the only thing that may you know, make an impact is if uh, we do a field trip or a class trip. So we need to make sure that we are following this guidance closely. So, um, you know, the big thing is uh, starting May 1st at the very bottom, uh, contact tracing logs will no longer be needed for events and gatherings. Uh, there was new information that was just released today around spring sports. Uh, which uh, the building ministers uh, just saw, uh, which kind of focuses on this, about the contract tracing laws, about masks being worn at uh, um, you know spring sports or other events. 
Step three, this is the one that I think we're going to focus on. Uh, so all of our events will uh, were encouraged to be held outdoors. And one of the reasons why we look at the shift to an outdoor uh, ceremonies, graduation is the fact that one, from a logistics standpoint, it makes things a lot less of a headache. Uh, we look at right now in, in our best case scenarios, one unvaccinated person per 50 square feet, up to 300 unvaccinated people, whichever is less, plus any number of vaccinated people as universal guidance or spacing allows. As we look at some of our gyms in years past, we've had a hard time fitting enough people in there uh, for our graduation. As, as we look at trying to decide or decipher who's vaccinated, who's unvaccinated, it's just a logistical headache. What we've decided to do with our graduations between the Cori Valley is we are shifting to an outdoor graduation. The reason why we're doing outdoor graduation is you can see here, we have to 900 unvaccinated people plus any number of vaccinated individuals as universal guidance or space it allows. Uh, talking with the building principals, uh, we will have more than enough space to accommodate uh, a large number of family members, uh, community members who wanna come out and support our graduates. Uh, the one thing we have to make sure, obviously, is just that we, you know, we'll talk about this a little later, about we just try our best to figure out who's going to be vaccinated or unvaccinated. Uh, the state has asked us to uh, provide a self-attestation form. Uh, we're currently developing that, what that might look like. I, I talked to the regional superintendents this morning about this as well. So once we have a common form, I will release that to the, uh, the staff, students, and to the board as well. Uh, once again, all events and gatherings must follow the universal guidance which includes spacing requirements and mask mandates. Uh, I know there's been some changes with masks, particularly with, uh, you know, governor said that, you know, there are a lot of people believe masks do not need to be worn outside anymore. Uh, what we are looking at right now is our current AOE uh, guidance, which states that uh, if you are, you know, mingling or with people outside of your family group or pod, uh, masks need to be worn. Uh, so, you know, that is as of May 4th. Obviously, our graduations are about a month away. If things change, we will keep you updated. We'll let you know. Uh, as I said before, the guidance that we're taking a look at is directly from the AOE and DOH. Uh, this will assist us in the plan of our graduation and end of year events. So moving into our in-person graduation outdoor ceremonies. So the outdoor ceremonies are encouraged, as I said before, as long as they follow the established guidelines, outline the strong and healthy year, which can be found online, and the Vermont Forward Plan. GRCSU schools uh, should remind participants about the public health requirements for these gatherings, including advising potential participants that those people with COVID-19 like symptoms must stay home. Uh, we are in allergy season. I know I, I have a terrible seasonal allergies. I, it, there are days I feel miserable. Uh, and a lot of those uh, allergy symptoms mimic those of COVID-19. Uh, right now we are you know, looking at anybody who has a COVID-19 like symptom will have to stay home. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, regardless if you say you have allergies or not, that, you know, there will be ways of, uh, you know, declaring that you have allergies. I know that uh, we look at school, there's some medical notes that can be brought to whatever else, but we'll work through that uh, moving forward. Uh, facial coverings may be removed while delivering speeches and accepting diplomas. Uh, so this is something for the graduates. We are looking uh, at, with regard to the current guidance. If our graduates are seated at least six feet apart on the field and outdoors, they will not have to wear a mask, but that's something where I said the building principals will look at space and what we're going to do. But if they if they cannot seat the graduates, uh, they have to seat the graduates closer than six feet apart. The graduates will have to wear their masks. Uh, but when they go up to deliver a speech or accept the diplomas, they remove their masks for pictures. Uh, and as I said before, Cory Valley Schools will follow step three of the events and gatherings provision in the Vermont Forward Plan. Excuse me, participation of vaccinated individuals. Uh, so I said this before, but we are being asked by the state to try to draw a distinction between the participation of vaccinated and non-vaccinated individuals. Uh, this is uh, a problem area and it, it was discussed at length in, in our regional superintendents group in terms of what that looks like, how we can, how we can do this. Uh, the, the state right now is recommending that we should utilize some means of self-attestation to determine the vaccination status of all individuals attending end of school year events. Uh, this will impact obviously how many people we can fit or where people can sit and along those lines. Uh, we will have more information on that. Uh, I do expect more clarity to come from the state in terms of uh, how best to handle this. Uh, for the purpose of attending a graduation uh, ceremony, a student shall be uh, deemed to be vaccinated if they received uh, all required doses of vaccine at least two weeks prior to an event. So our seniors could be fully vaccinated by graduation, 
you know, like I said, it is a personal choice and we're seeing you opted not to, that's fine. But that obviously just you know, weigh into how we handle the graduation ceremony. Shifting to proms and end of year celebrations. I know this has been a big concern with a lot of our parents and our students. Uh, you know, as Governor Dan French said a while ago that proms can continue. Uh, some it wasn't a lot of guidance given to us with regards to this, but proms and other social events, once again, are permitted in accordance with the, the guidelines stated the strong and healthy year and Vermont forward. The good news is dancing may occur at proms, uh, end of year social events, our participants must remain masked. And I say this where this is a change because initially we were getting word that dancing would not be allowed at, at proms or end of, end of year social events. But so they've uh, they've changed that and said that they, you know, dancing can occur, that the students can dance. Um, now dance well, that's another story, but, uh, but they can dance. And, uh, but the participants uh, at the time have to remain masked. Uh, it is our goal, obviously, during this time to, you know, maintain social distancing. Uh, we're gonna do the best we can to ensure that. Um, in order to ensure that proms in accordance with current guidance regulations, we are encouraging all proms and other social events to take place on school property. Uh, it's just it's easier for us to kind of control and you know limit the uh, the exposure and look at the guidance regulations. Said so we encourage it. We also know that uh, realistically, some uh, schools are looking at outside venues, and that's something which we, as a board, we can discuss. Uh, here is the universal guidance. Uh, that everything is falling after and just encouraging people to stay home and sick, mask wearing, including while dancing at prom, uh, combined with event guidance, you know, it's four and then social distancing and mask wearing. So this is really nothing new with the exception of the dancing. Um, thing. This is something we've been kind of following the whole, whole year. All right. Uh, field and class trips. End of year field trips are permitted in accordance with the guidelines established under the strong and healthy year guidance. Uh, out of state and overnight field trips are discouraged. Uh, and then outdoor and virtual field trips are strongly preferred. Indoor field trips are not preferred, but allowed if students are distance on buses and in the facility and do not mix with students from other pods, schools, or general public. We do not have a lot of field trips planned for the end of the year, but I do know that as we look at uh, end of the year celebrations, typically, you know, a sixth grade class or eighth grade class or a uh, senior class would do their, their, their trips. Uh, this year, uh, some of our advisors have are looking at the potential of doing a one day trip in state somewhere. Uh, so, you know, I think our building ministers can kind of touch upon that a little bit later in terms of what their thoughts are, what they might be thinking. Uh, and last, yeah, building ministers will be providing more detailed information regarding the schools and your celebrations and graduation. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact your child or children's building administrator. Uh, there is one thing I, I, I don't know if I touched upon, I just want to make sure that, uh, was in here or not? So it must. Be. So, I spoke with the Department of Health the other day, and it, it didn't make it in here. But uh, guests from other schools are allowed, according to the uh, the field trip and end of year trip guidance. Uh, so it's something which you know they were talking about as we look at winter sports, spring sports, things on those lines. That's. Uh, if a, a student from one of our schools would like to bring, uh, say, someone from Fairhaven or Mill River or Otter Valley, that according to the uh, Department of Health guidance, that that would be allowed. Um, so I just wanted to kind of clarify that because I know that was a concern from uh, some of our parents and as well as some staff members. All right. And that's really it in terms of the overall guidance. Uh, any, I'm sure we'll have some questions, some discussion on this. So. So I think if maybe the next thing we could do is go through, let's go through uh, building by building and hear what the proposals are from each building. And then we'll take questions after if that's okay. Yep, All right. With that. So we'll start, I'll start with uh, Christy's the first one to pop on my screen. So I'll start with her. Um, yeah. Elementary is probably much easier than high school. So, um, we are, so do you want to do field trips or just our promotion ceremony, Lisa, or who, what do you guys want? Uh, yeah, I think talk about what you have planned for end of year. So okay. ceremony, um, sure. end of year parties, kind of, yeah. kind of those kinds of things, probably with the exception of prom and dancing. Okay. So, um, May 21st, <laughs> sixth graders are taking a geology field trip. 
On um, June 7th, we are going to have school-wide field days down at the Proctor Youth Field. Um, we've done this prior to COVID and we are able to socially distance and we'll have um, tents set up for different grade levels and we'll, we have a lot of organized events. Um, June 10th, we're gonna have a pool day for the fifth and sixth graders. In years past, the whole school went over there, but we were able to have three separate days so five, six will go over one day, three, four will go over one day, then K2 will go over one day. Um, so we're working with the pool folks, um, the, the pool director, I guess, um, to make sure that we're able to socially distance and, and follow all the guidelines on that. For sixth graders in the past, they've done a day trip to Boston. Um, this year, we're looking to go to the Otter Creek Outdoor Center. Um, we had looked into Killington, but they're not offering anything until July 1st. So I've been in contact with the folks at Otter Creek Outdoor Center. It's about $22 a student, and that will include um, mini golf, an arcade, um, uh, bouncy houses, unlimited pizza, ice cream, soda, fries, um, and that's about 22 bucks a person. He's given us a really good deal with that. Um, promotion, June 14th at 6 o'clock. It will be held behind Proctor Elementary School. We will be getting a tent that can house about 100 people underneath it. We have um, 18 students. So just looking into how many students, um, how many people each student can bring. We typically don't have much more than that in attendance. Um, and that will be followed by a parade. Um, we did that last year. It was really successful. It was one thing that families wanted us to bring back. So we will... Um, Make sure our parade route is sim similar as last year, um, and that would be escorted by the, the uh, fire department, the volunteer fire department. And June 15th will be the last day of school. So those are the events that we have planned for my building. Okay, and just for clarification, since funding is a component, is there funding for the Otter Creek, or yes. is that something that you would be seeking funding for? Um, I'm going to have the um, our PTO pay for it. Okay. So, is there anything transpiring at your school for end of the year that you need funding for? Um, I mean, if I can get funding, of course, so we don't have to tap out the PTO funds. Um, busing for the Proctor Youth Field is what I—that's probably going to be our most expensive thing, just because they're doing repair work um, headed down to get to the Proctor Youth League. So it was advised that we don't necessarily walk. So we will have to get a, um, a bus just to kind of sh uh, shuttle folks back and forth in the morning and then for pickup. And that's going to be probably our most costly um, part of our end of the year events. All right. And do you have an estimate on what that might be? It's around $380. For the entire event? For um, Just for the busing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, how about we move on to, I see Joe Harrington, so, or you know what, I'm sorry, Joe, let's go to um, Kristen, we'll do both elementary schools first. Hi, everybody, my camera's off because of my Wi-Fi, I'm not trying to be rude at all. <clears throat> uh, what we have right now for our end of the year events, we are planning a field day with organized games, all classes, of course, will be in their self-contained pods. And we have a bounce house. It's not really a bounce house. It's a maze and a water slide. And we had met with Dr. Chick about all of this stuff and got it approved by him. Um, we are trying to have an outdoor concert that will be on May 28th. And we're going to try to combine it with Memorial Day so we can, you know, bring, try to bring that tradition back. And then our advancement night is planned for June 14th at six o'clock, just like Christie's. <laughs> and we're planning to have an outdoor ceremony with parents bringing their own lawn chairs, that kind of thing. And the kids set up six feet apart, socially distanced. So. Okay. And is there anything happening um, with these events that require additional funding, or do you have funding for these events? We're all set. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, Joe Harrington. So I'll start with graduation. Um, we are 
going to attempt, and I think we can do it, we are going to have a very traditional graduation outside. Uh, we have ordered a very large circus tent. Um, that probably is about the same size as our gym. So I think we can do this. Um, we will have the same staging. We'll have the same setup as we have had in the past. It will just be under a tent. Um, we also will be doing our uh, traditional class night the night before in the same space, um, you know, obviously for both events following all the, the guidelines that will be set forth. One thing that we are adding this year, and we have moved the graduations from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. because we were a little concerned about lighting. And sometimes our, our ceremonies can, they can be a little lengthy. So we have moved everything to 6 p.m. Something that we are adding um, this year, after class night, the senior class is going to be doing a barbecue. And we are going to do that barbecue on school property in our parking lot. So we're looking to see if we actually can get another tent, maybe a smaller tent that we would put in the parking lot. And that would occur directly after class night. Um, so that may be, if we can get it, that would be an extra expense for us. Um, we are looking, the seniors have talked about doing a day trip. They are right now bouncing ideas around of what they, they you know, it's kind of limited. Um, but they are looking to figure out something they can do for the day uh, in the state of Vermont, whether that's going up to Burlington, Church Street, whatever it may be. They're, they're bouncing ideas around now. I would say that probably will happen, <clears throat> but we're, we're not sure exactly what it's going to look like like yet. Um, you know, this time of year, days are precious and there, there are not a lot of days left in the school year. So also finding time to do these things are complicated. Um, they do have money for that uh, because the seniors, you know, have been raising money for years, but because they were not able to raise money their senior year, um, that may be something that may need to be uh, helped with, not fully paid for, but maybe helped with. We're, again, depending on what they do, where they go, we're not sure yet. Um, we are putting, as far as prom goes, we are putting, we did, maybe that happened today. If it didn't happen today, it's happening very soon a survey out to the high school kids to see if they even want to have a prom, um, you know, and under the, what all the, the guidelines are, the, the things that are in place that they can't do, they were not too enthused about having that. But I just did here 10 minutes ago that they can have guests from another school that could change their thinking. A lot of our kids date kids from other schools um, or they date people who aren't, in school anymore who may have just graduated. So we will have to get that new information out to them because that could change their thinking about whether they wanna have a prom or not because that was a big sticking point for them. Um, so we'll, we'll have to, we'll look at that in the next day or two. Um, but we are gonna totally, it's gonna be the ch student's choice. If they wanna have one, we will make it happen. If they don't wanna have one, then, then we don't have one. Um, there are other various field trips that traditionally happen at the end of the year. A lot of times our, our lower grades go down to the local rec park. We will have discussions about that. Um, I would assume that's something they may want to continue. And again, if that does occur, um, if they want to do that, then that may be some area that may be an area too, because we haven't been able to fundraise for those different classes that they may need to some financial support for that also, which would not be a whole lot of money, you know, be buying maybe hot dogs and hamburgers and, and things of that sort, but far from being a, a, a huge expense. So where I could see right now is the ex extra expenses could be that second tent. It could be um, maybe paying for that graduation tent part of it. Um, it could be supporting some of the, the day trip um, and maybe some of the barbecue. I don't have money or the amount of any of that right now, but it would be paying for helping to pay for some of those things, I would imagine. That's all I got. Okay. And when we start talking about um, high school trips and things like that, I guess <clears throat> the, we're talking about... Um, expending their funds first before uh, we supplement with funds. 
Right. And th that was made very clear to the to the kids that, that that would be the case. You know, we would be looking to supplement the things that we need to do, like the tent and those kind of things, you know, that wouldn't necessarily ever be paid for by the class. Absolutely. The tent that that those are those are beyond res class responsibilities. Absolutely. Right. All right. Moving on to um, Joanne Proctor. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, so Proctor's graduation is June twelfth at ten a.m. in the morning. Uh, we are planning to have a tent outside, have an outside graduation. Um, we are looking to um, rent that tent uh, from the weekend before because it is the um, plan of the junior class to have a, a, a dance. Uh, a, what we're calling a summer dance or a dance party on uh, June 5th instead of a prom. Um, this would include students from nine through grade 12, and it would be held in the back of um, Proctor High School, uh, butted up against the, um, the tennis courts, and we would have uh, some catering. Um, they would be looking for some funding around that because uh, the junior class or the, the fundraising has not, they don't feel that they've been able to be given an opportunity to make enough money to, to support that. Uh, we would have a DJ. Um, it would go from five to eight o'clock at night. Um, we would have a number of probably five or six staff members in attendance. And um, depending on what the board decides, whether we have outside guests or not. Um, uh, backing up from that, um, the seniors also have a couple of ideas for a senior field trip, but given the uncertainty about the women's softball and uh, men's uh, um, uh, uh, baseball team, we're not quite sure exactly. So they have been in contact with UVM uh, to see if we can use the ropes course there. That would be a three hour ropes course um, experience for our kids. And then they would go to Church Street and have a luncheon um, at that point. Uh, another option would be to go to the trampoline park. To be honest, I don't really know where that is. I think it might be Williston, but it is an indoor experience. The same thing would hold true that they would go to the indoor trampoline park and then have lunch on Church Street and come home. Um, and then the third and final option, if necessary, would be to go to a state park have a barbecue, a luncheon, and then return back to school. But again, they're not able to identify a date because they're worried about um, all the final um, uh, sports team um, situations. Um, the seniors are also hoping to have a senior dinner. Um, there are some names, uh, locations that have been thrown around, uh, like the Hams Farm, other locations outside. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm a little worried about that because I don't have relationships with the parents or the students to the extent that if I attended that event, which I would be expected to do, um, that I could monitor appropriately uh, the social distancing, the um, the organization of the of the food, as well as you know the mask. You know, it would be very awkward for me to do that. So I would recommend that we have a senior banquet on campus so that I could attend and be responsible. It would be hard for me to do it otherwise, but you know, I'm certainly open to that. Um, we, uh, other than the dance, the senior banquet and the field trip, we are looking at a, um, an event for our uh, sixth graders to come over and do a transition with our school. And Christy and I are in negotiations about that. We don't really have a plan for that right now. We wouldn't need funding for it. Um, but we'd like to hold true to the, uh, as much as we can the traditions that have been held. Um, we have also at the end of the year, um, what are some of the, I'm sorry, what are the other activities? Uh, as I said, we have graduation at 10 o'clock in the morning on, on the 12th. I think, I think that's about it. So we would be looking for the funding to support the senior activities. I do know that they do have some money in their accounts right now, but you know, given um, given the COVID situation, uh, they would be open to the board helping in any way that they can. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I can't get unmute. It's like harder and harder every time to unmute. All right, um, Joe. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so a lot of this stuff that for us at least was kind of put on hold because it's a wait and see type thing of what was going to happen. I mean, a lot of the stuff in the last 24 to 48 hours has just come up. Um, move up day. Uh, Chris called me yesterday, so we could do a move up day. I've already been in touch with um, Liz down at Wells, and I'm going to reach out to Rick and Kristen. Uh, we're again just finding a date where the kids can come up. Obviously, be separate days for the the different schools, but find days for those kids to come up to our building. Um, prom, we had talked about the prom. Right now, um, you know, I talked to the senior advisors last week. Uh, told them kind of put everything on hold till after tonight. One of the things we've looked at, we reached out to Castleton. They have the um, they have a atrium up there at Castleton that we could, you know, it's an outside because we were looking at the outside place. And uh, she said the weekend that we were looking at, the weekend of June 5th, they have it available. Um, it's an outdoor thing. And they said, you know, they could put like two sides down. So it's kind of there. Uh, we've, we've been in contact with a company for the tent for graduation. Um, and for prom, because the, the way the guy says he doesn't have enough help, he could, you know, would have to be like up for two weeks. Uh, you know, and he said, I wouldn't charge you for that type thing. But uh, one of the issues we have right now is where to put it. Um, our baseball, you know, we talk about the, the sports teams and everything like that. You know, if we do it early, too early, it's on the baseball field. and We got to check out the schedule for that. Even if we tried to put it down the elementary school, we got the fields down there as well. So. Uh, that's something we need to look at. Again, been in touch with those people about that. Same thing for graduation. We always plan for an outside graduation. Uh, in the past, we've gotten a trailer put down out there. Um, and usually it's the night before decision of do we set chairs up inside or outside? Uh, I don't know about, again, if the tent situation, trying to figure out location where we can put the tent, where it can stay up for a few weeks without, you know, being in the way of everything. Um you know, we could either that or we just, you know, hope that we have great weather like we did last year. Um, ours is a Friday night, June 11th, that's six. And that's what we're looking at. Um, we have end of the year barbecue. We have talked about, talked to a couple of my staff about that. Just in the past, we've gone to Lake St. Catherine State Park for that. This time we were talking, uh, maybe just do something up at the high school. Uh, for the kids, just do like an afternoon kind of field day type thing outside. Um, just tossed that around last last week. We were talking about it. Uh, we're looking at our honors night. Last year we did like a virtual honors night. Um, we have a meeting set up for tomorrow to kind of discuss this. Uh, one of the things someone talked about this year too is maybe do a live stream where the staff is there. And so the staff, we just don't have an audience in front of us. So we kind of do... Um, instead of everyone recording their stuff and we send out the recording, it's actually live and the staff is in there, but that's something we're working on too. Um, and also our honors, national honor societies, our art national honor society is looking at, uh, an outdoor induction ceremony. And I know our national honor society is working on that as well. Um, trying to see what we can do for an outdoor ceremony with that. With that, I did touch base with Dr. Chick. Um, if we don't have a tent, and it's raining on that day. And they're looking at, you know, there's seven kids in the National Art Honor Society. So with the parents in there, they're looking at less than 30 people in the, in the you know, he said it could be put in the gym uh, inside with a social distancing piece. So, um, and we hadn't even talked about senior trip when I meet with the senior class advisors later this week. That's something, you know, I, I be honest with you, I thought that was out of the question until, like I said, earlier this week that, um, with the senior trip because it was uh, even just a day trip in, within the state. So um, as far as funding goes, it, it all depends. You know, we got the tent. That's going to be an expense. Um, you know, the prom, if we have to we go up to Castleton, there's an expense there for the, the place up there. Um, you know, of course, busing, if we do anything else that requires us leaving the campus, that type of thing. So, um that's about what we got right here in Pontley. Again, it was a lot of it was we're putting stuff on hold. We didn't want to make too many plans um, and just have everything. You know, we know last year 
it was what three days, four days before graduation, they changed the rules again. I know things are a lot looser this year than they were last year too. So, um, so we're just gonna like I, you know, like Joe said, not a lot of days to do it, and uh, you know, same thing trying to get everything in with sports and um, everything else, trying to get everything in, try to do it that way. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions from the board members about any of the principal's presentations or updates about end of year activities? Yeah, I have one quick question. Yes, thanks, Lisa. Uh, actually, for Joanne, um, when you were talking about, I, I definitely hear you on the uh, senior dinner piece, and I, I am leaning in alignment with you for sure. That being yeah. said, do you know if your schedule could allow such an event to occur in that window where that tent would be already on campus? I think we could probably work that out, Seth. Um, I, I, I think, from what I remember, I think they were planning on the sixth of June to have the senior banquet, which I think is a Sunday. Um, yeah, it is. Um, it's the day after the um, the dance. So uh, if we did it on campus, we could do it under the tent. That would work. Um, but you know, like like I said, we're also. I mean, the the kids are also worried about the fact that we are heading in. I mean, if anything happened during the week, we're heading into the finals, right? And so they really didn't want to schedule anything like the senior class trip or even the banquet to be in conflict with that. But if we did it on the sick, that would not be a, a conflict. Thank you. And uh, one actually uh, random follow up and maybe Chris is the one for this. Should uh, let's just use that example with with Joanne for a minute, and let's think that maybe over the course of a week there could potentially be three separate events occurring under that tent. If um, is there a possibility for those plans to get derailed if there's something like a um, a case that arrives in the uh, attendees that have been there despite all of the precautions and guidance? Seth, that's been kind of what we've been doing with all year. Any, any time, anything can get derailed. And I think that's just something we have to be aware of is just the flexibility. Of, you know, like I said, we're, we are cramming a lot in at the end of the year. It always happens in a normal year. But uh, this year, like I said, if there were was a positive case, which you know could happen, uh, we would go through contact tracing and we would have to you know potentially uh, look at uh, shutting down or rescheduling a, a banquet as a result. That's just the reality of this year. So. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. So there are a couple of things then that as a board, we need to have some level of consensus on that Chris has head on and Seth just did about with respect to activities, the comfort level of having them um, off property, on property. So how, how would the board like to proceed with that? I mean, with field trips, I, I think that the field trips, I'm just going to say that that we have um, have been described. I, I didn't see anything that was um, largely questionable like that. I guess I'm talking more about um, prom, banquets, those kinds of things, and the feeling of the board. Because tonight is the night that we're meeting to give guidance to our administrators so that they can go forward and information can be um, sent out to not just graduates, but parents and, and those that are going to be coming in for other activities. So there's some decision making that needs to happen tonight. Well, I, I think the kids should be able to go off campus for field trips, proms, um, you know, whatever the guidance allows. Okay. And what's your feeling if, if building administrators are recommending comfort level oversight, we're responsible for the oversight of the guidance. Are, are we going to support um, our building administrators? Absolutely. Okay. So, 
currently, I think it, it appears that two are asking. So Joanne is saying she, her preference would be to stay on school property. And yeah. then Joe, um, have Joe D, I'm sorry. <laughs> too, too many Kristens, too many Joes in these meetings. Um, have they already um, reserved the space for prom? No, um, I, I just reached out to Castleton because of the outside piece of it. Um, like I said, we're not sure about getting a tent on our property someplace where it's not going to be in the way. Uh, we either take up a ball field or we take up a parking lot. That's about what we got for um, if we have a, a large, Joe, what's yours, like 80 by 40 or something like that? Um, yes, exactly, 80 by 40. Yeah, because we called up there and to see, so it would be an 80 by 40 tent. So, uh, again, it's just location, location, location. So we're looking. I did call Castleton just to put a feeler in there, and they are open that week, and they're willing to work with us, uh, give us a nice discount for going in there. So, um, you know, they said that was open. You could use the bathrooms right there in the stadium type thing. Um, we've always gone off campus with our proms. Uh, again, just trying to find a, a spot, trying to uh, think ahead, try to find an area where we can um, be outside. And if it did rain, we don't have to cancel everything and um, they could still kind of have a good time and stay dry. So. so can I just provide some clarification as well? I think if we look at the proms from a field trip perspective, uh, when we went through the guidance, the guidance uh, strongly discourages indoor field trips uh there you know obviously there's a lot of caveats with that but outdoor field trips are fine I, I look at there is a difference between proctor's request and joe's request well joe is looking at an outdoor space under an atrium where uh under field trip guidance would be generally allowable um while joanne's would be more of an indoor where it's not preferred but if it were necessary there are certain provisions that would have to be taken into place so i, I think it's as we look at those two different scenarios, it kind of fits within the field trip guidance that I kind of outlined earlier. So actually to clarify, uh, and just what you were just saying, Chris, Joanne, you're the request for that out or offsite dinner, maybe at a farm, for example, that was to be inside potentially. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought it was in like the barn area or whatever. So, okay. So Joanne mute. Joanne, unfortunately, you're muted. Sorry about that. I, I don't know. That's a really good question. I assumed, which is not very good of me, that because it was a farm, it was going to be outside. Maybe somebody else has other information, but I thought it was an outside event, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, if, if you, we make a decision that only outside events are, you know, a, approvable, I mean, I would, I would hold to that. But as you know, my other uh, issue is really trying to monitor that, whether it's outside or inside, because I'm, I'm a new administrator. I wish I knew the families better than I do and the kids, but I don't. I've only been here since December. And for me to monitor and you know tell people to distance and wear masks on an on a on a campus that I don't know the family or the people, it it, it really puts me in a very difficult situation. So that that is something that I have a concern about. Yeah, I guess my thought process there would be that if um, let me just give you the whole my whole overarching spiel. I think. Um, as we look at field trips, sort of things, et cetera, when we're talking about one singular class, if that ends up being at a facility that's something um, like indoors, and I forget, um, uh, for example, a trampoline park was mentioned. Um, I think that's indoors. I do yeah. think that is an indoor thing. And, and so if there's some indoor stuff, the way I'm thinking is that if, if we're talking about a single class that's basically a pod that already exists, that I personally wouldn't have too many concerns with that. Um, but if we're talking about something like a prom that's going to start to swell and be be quite a bit bigger, I get I get more um, nervous about that as well. So um, right. I think maybe the size could kind of 
help to dictate that a little bit as well. And then just, I kind of feel like if we're going to, if we're going to utilize an outside space that we, I, I guess I'll just say that we, as the, the, you know, the school or maybe even the towns, we don't have some jurisdiction over. Um, I think that they should be at a, uh, like a professional sort of setting that where, you know, such as Castleton or such as these other places where the, basically we're dealing with people who provide spaces uh, as their business. And I, I would not support um, full school sanctioned um, activities, let's say, at a private residence for okay. an example. Okay. So, sorry, I'll just put my two cents, Lisa, really quick. Um, I, yeah, I would, sure. I would, um, you know, support what others have said. Uh, I, I think um, I'm more inclined to support administrators and their comfort level. You know, Joanne, you made some really, you know, you made a really good point in terms of what your experiences have been briefly since you've been here. Um, uh, you know, Joe D, you have, you know, Castleton and, the, you know, it's very local and it's a, you know, I've, the pavilions, you know, pretty much hardly used at all right now over there. It's pretty deserted. Um, there's parking. You can easily get out of the rain if you need to, et cetera. So um, anyway, I, I would say if it's outdoors and it like um, Seth said, it's, it's sort of a contained field trip. Um, not involving outsider people outside of our school people, then I'm totally in support of that or an indoor event. That's just a small number of our students. If it's like a prom where other guests are allowed sort of non, you know, not our own school guests um, are allowed as if it's outdoors, I'd be much more inclined to support that just so that, um, yeah, we can, we have a little bit more control over, sort of, especially when we don't have a process yet for how we're gonna do the attestation form of, of who's vaccinated and who's not. I, you know, that's gonna be another challenge. And if you're not, if you're doing an outdoor event and people can sort of enter at any point, you know, we're gonna have to think about how we do that versus an indoor place like a trampoline park, there's an entrance and you would, someone would have to be there with the forms or whatever. So those kinds of things, um, the feasibility of that has to be considered too. So, but you know, I'm I'm inclined to support our administrators and what they think will be the most fun for kids, given all the stuff we have to deal with. So, and the protocols we have to deal with. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that um, we we would encourage to stay on on property. But if administrators feel that that it is a feasible um, event to travel off and that they can um, oversee and fulfill the <clears throat> responsibilities of the guidance that as a board, we will support their decisions. Did we want to include outdoors in that as well, Lisa? Outdoors. <laughs> I, I mean, do do are you looking for us to make a motion? That was just kind of my like my summary of everybody. Talking. No, I I think really okay. we just think so. We we just you know getting guidance for it as we move forward, just so you we're all on the same page as we build the sure. plans out. So, okay. and we could have a more so, yes. more uh, we could have a more detailed or updated uh, at, on the seventeenth when we meet again. Uh, Absolutely, might, who knows? We'll have, be under different rules by then. And then I think the, the big piece tonight, and this is probably more for um, graduating classes, but um, we need to de determine how we're going to, um, the, the numbers we're going to allow. Are we going to give, let's say, 15 tickets to each graduate? Because we're, we're saying that graduate families are going to be setting in pods. So we need to have some way of, of determining that number. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? And, and how about Joe and Joe and Joanne just give us, I think, 
uh, numbers. What are you, Joe D, about 40 kids? We're uh, around 30, just like 30, oh. 32 maybe. Okay, and Joe H, what are you? Oh, I should know the answer to that. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I think we're probably around 25-ish. Okay. And Joanne, about the same, 25-ish? You, you, you can correct me, Lisa, but I think it's about 22. Okay. All right. Just that, I'm just giving that as an idea to board members when we're talking about if you're giving yeah. 15 tickets. Um, and granted, not every kid is going to bring 15 people. But right. I think from a, a planning perspective, um, we need to we need to have an idea about that. So what's what's the thought of the board? Too high, too low. <laughs> um, the thing that I, I guess the, the only concern that I would have, I can't, and, and I'm so sorry that I don't specifically remember all those numbers, but was it 900 in an outside? Uh, so, you know, so it's, it's that the, Seth, it's yeah. 900 plus any number of unvaccinated or vaccinated people. So that's 900 unvaccinated and you can have as many vaccinated people as you want. And sorry, one more quick, quick clarifier, a tent with, uh, let's say two walls, only that's outdoors or, or let's just say a tent with no walls. Is that considered completely outdoors or is that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Then forget what I was <laughs> starting to say. My calculations seem irrelevant uh, based on that gigantic amount of, uh, of allowance. And my only other question would be, um, you know, do we do something like a fixed number or, or sorry, uh, Students tell us of who your immediate fa family members are. So, uh, parents, step parents, grandparents, siblings, and basically we will accommodate, and then you get four tickets for people of your choice. Yes, Joe. So, what's complicated about this is we're outdoors, right? And we cannot police the whole grounds. Um, you know, we're going to have a tent down near our soccer field, but that doesn't mean people can't watch graduation from the playground or up on poison ivy hill or, or wherever from the cemetery <laughs> right so um the the ticket thing is going to work for the people that we want to be in the family members who are going to be inside the tent you know in the chairs watching but we're also potentially going to have a lot of people just people who like to go to graduations graduation crashers who are going to you know um, potentially watch from afar which you know what it's just hard to predict what that's going to look like, right? Right. And so I think that at this point, we have to be concerned about the graduates and their families. I think that, that that's our focus. And it's just like here, last year when we said it was only graduates, families that could fit in the, I don't know, three cars or whatever we did last year with cars. We still had people lined up on Olympus. You had people sitting over at the rink and we're still going to have that. But I think for people to be on the field, in front of the graduates, under the tent, th that is the group that we need to be um, concerned about this evening. We're not going to be able, and we could, I mean, here in Proctor, I think we could designate an area for students or something like that and, or, or whatever. And I'm sure you can in other schools also. But I think our first priority this year has to be um, the, the graduates and making sure that their um, families, loved ones are um, coming. Um, right. it so seems we have like, to know how many I, chairs I thought, we actually, we have to know how many chairs we actually can fit in that tent. We have to figure out yeah. exactly what the numbers are and then we have to break down the, how many tickets. So it's gonna, I would imagine it's gonna look different for each school. What we allow may be very different than what Pulteney allows um it's going to be based on the space and the number of kids 
So would is it, it okay a, to have different Would it be numbers? a problem asking? I mean, would it be a problem mm -hmm. surveying each family to see what the estimated number of family members might be so that we can plan so for that? You're going to have some people that are going to come back and they're going to want to bring 20 people. And someone I, I mean, else is going to bring four. We, we had uh, the Rutland County principals met this morning at Spur on uh, with Stafford and they, you know, we kind of tossed this around and we were like, what's everybody doing? I know some of them were just like five tickets per family. And if you're only bringing two people, I can't give my three tickets to Kristen because she wants to bring eight. It was no, you get five tickets per family. Um, again, again, I think for us, what I'm thinking right now is just, if we do the tent, like Joe said, how many people can we fit in there? How many chairs with the staging can we get in there for um, families uh, and, and go from there? I, I will say we have a we have it last year. We had it this year too. We have a set of twins, and we said X amount per family, not per student. So it was um, you know it wasn't like well you got two twins you can get ten tickets there instead of uh, we just said per family. And that doesn't mean that right. other family members can't watch that graduation from outside the tent. Right, right. And that's what one of the school, other schools were saying is like, we have tickets for inside the tent, and then people, if they want to be outside, right. they can stand outside and watch. And if it's raining, bring an umbrella type thing. So, right. So, people have to sit in their pods, though. That's, that's the key part about this at graduation. So in Proctor, we had said we weren't setting out chairs, that we were making people bring their own chairs. Um, and I think that seems like a smart thing to do. Save some money too. Yeah. I mean, if you're coming and it's an outdoor event, I mean, people have outdoor chairs. And then we said we would have some chairs available. But I just think that that's easier for people to set in their pods also. So um, <clears throat> I, I think we need to set a number and I think we need to be consistent with the number across all three schools. I think once we start doing different numbers at different schools, that's where issues arise. So I, I would like us to make that decision this evening. And I'm welcome to suggestions. But I think that's a decision that needs to be made so information can get out. So what was a traditionally uh, accepted, widely accepted number? So we've had, you know, Greg, we've had as many as, wow. Uh, it's hard to say. Three, four, or 500 people in our gym. You know, depending on the class, it's the gym is packed graduation night. Uh, you know, we have the bleachers out. We have our chairs in the gym floor. Then we have the whole row, lar you know, large section of bleachers out that are filled. The floors filled. Uh, but is that, that, was that, that was the general population, correct? That was not strictly a family. So, so were we in a situation before where each school was giving, let's say, a, this thing of family tickets? No, we never, we never did that. Uh, We've never done that. Never uh, wanted to come. They, they weren't allowed to reserve seats. So if you came with 15 family members, you waited in line until the door opened and you picked your... 15 seats and uh, some families came with two or three, you know, it was, we have split families and, you know, Brady Bunch families. And so that's the problem. If you go as small as five tickets is that potentially could cause a lot of problems. And so I would, I would suggest somewhere between seven and 10 would seem reasonable to me. We used to, when we had them inside, when I first started, before we did the outside ones, they would give 10 tickets per family so they could sit on the floor. And then if they wanted to bring extra people, they could sit up in the bleachers. But we always had plenty of room in the chairs as well. So I, I agree with you, Joe. I think seven to 10 is a good number. Um, you know, All right. I mean, we got, you know, support. We're, we're looking at, like, my school's got, we'll just say for even sakes, 30 kids. You know, so you're looking at 300 tickets. Actually, you know, I got two sets of twins graduating this year. So you're talking 280 tickets. But, uh, um, you know, if you look at it that way, uh, 
I think we could accommodate 10. Boy, it's so hard to know without that tent being set up out there. Yeah. But again, again, if it, 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 we could spread beyond that if we need to, if it's a nice night. What's going to put a, what's going to be difficult is if this is not a nice night. Right. Got, it's just going to be. And yeah. Yeah. And we can certainly, that, 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 I mean, we can calculate estimations on those numbers very, very, very quickly. Once we know the rough area of the, uh, of the stage and how much sort of space in between the crowd and there and how much space we want to do that. So that, that's a pretty easy calculation um, we can make, but was there a consistent, uh, and I, I don't also remember the sizes of tents everybody was mentioning. Um, was that fairly consistent or not necessarily? I think Joe, uh, Pulteney's and West Rutland's is similar in size. I don't. Chris, yeah, I don't know what, what was what was what was Proctor. I do believe last year was like a forty by forty tent. Yeah, we called West Rutland to see what they had for their size of the tent because Jay had said it was like the size of a basketball court. So, and we just got the same size. We we do have we've talked to people. Do you, have, do you ever do you recall what those dimensions were? Forty, 40 by 80. eighty. Forty by eighty. Okay, okay. Yep. You guys keep chatting. I'm gonna look at that really quick. All right, and so I don't know if anybody else saw, but Christy said in the chat the most she could do is five tickets per family for hers. And I That's, don't know, um, Christy, what our tent is going to be set up on a back playground, and it's to hold a hundred people. And if we have to socially distance them, um, you know, if it's a nice night, people can stand outside of it. But I, I know we couldn't accommodate more than that. Do we have a different number for sixth grade versus, I mean, I don't know how many kids in the sixth grade sort of ceremonies versus um, high school. Appropriate for sure to have a smaller number, definitely. Um, we have 19 students in sixth grade this year. Um, but I mean, having five tickets each under the tent is still going to be very tight. I just don't have the space either because it's going to be on my playground and we're having it actually set up for, you know, an extended period of time just for shading as well. So I think um, they said it could have a hundred people underneath. No walls on it. So what we could do is just say have a max number. And then if, when you actually get the tent, you know, agreed upon and you know the exact dimensions of what which tent you're actually getting, you could then decrease from there if you needed to. But I would say no more than than 10 and then for sixth grade, you know, you're, we're just gonna have to do it by the size of the space that we have. And that's just the, the where we are in the world right now, you know? Um, do we so have guys, to have classroom um, space and all of that too. So, you know, I mean, it's just like anything else. We're, we're limited by guidance and we're limited by safety and all of that. So if you can't get a tent that's, a, you know, on a property of a certain size, and we're just going to have to limit the number that way. I'm not, you know, I, and I don't know if we can 100% decide that at this moment, if we don't even know what the tents, exact tent sizes are going to be yet. And again, we're not turning people away from graduation either. I kind of look at this like we did soccer games, you know, we had, uh, area that allowed 150 people, but that doesn't mean you couldn't watch the game from, you know, outside of the viewing area. So if you want to bring 15 family members, you can bring 15 family members. They just aren't going to be able to watch graduation from maybe 50 feet away. They might be 100 feet away, but they're still going to be allowed to be there. So, so what's yeah, the sorry, I, I just crushed some, crunched some numbers um, really quickly. And, and, and listen, just doing some Google search, right, about generally accepted square footage for public seating. A um, handful of different things come up. Table seating is 25 square feet per seat. Study corral, 30 square feet, yada, yada. Um, and let's think about that real quick too, right? So, so 30 square feet would simply be five by six. Right. So and and maybe that sounds a lot for for sitting there, but it's not a whole lot of space when you talk about leg space, feet, et cetera, uh, any sort of social distancing. So really quickly. Right. And so the 40 by 40, if we use that 40 by 40 tent example, 
Um, that's 1,600 square feet. And that's 1,600 square feet for the entire tent, which should include uh, the stage, et cetera. But if we only divide that by 30 for, um, you know, if it was 30 square feet per seat, we can only seat 53 in that. Yeah, but uh, graduates won't be under the same tent, are they? Our graduates aren't. So I, I think we need to kind of scale back what we're, we're thinking about these tents. We're not going to be able to get these large, like Barnum and Bailey circus tents, you know, where we can, you know, so really realistically, I think we'll have like a, a stage. We may be able to get graduates, but like last year we, we had people fanned out across the, the field and everybody was able to see, I mean, we'll have to have rain dates. We'll have to, I know that last year we at Proctor, we had to delay things a little bit because a storm came through and just went just South and we, we were very lucky, but you know, we, we were going back and forth the whole night about what we need to do. But I think regardless of the size, we really have to take a look at that. One, not everyone's going to be under the tent. We, we know that, and uh, nor should we try to limit that. I, I think, you know, really, if we look at, you know, I say, you know, 10 tickets per family, I think every, every building mystery will, to kind of, will be able to, to accommodate that um, and, and find a way. It's just, it's, you know, if it rains, it's going to change, but I think we have to have a rain date. Uh, you know, on hand and just let people know that it is weather dependent just as it was last year. And um, people, may, you know, and there'll be some people, they'll, they'll sit in for a soccer game, for a baseball game in the rain. Uh, you know, I bet they'd sit out for graduation in the rain too, but uh, not to say that I'm, I would encourage that, but I'm just saying. So how does that sound? 10 tickets per graduate and five tickets for sixth grade. Sounds good. Yeah, I'd support so, that. Can I just ask a question? So we're not using the tent at the elementary school. We're either going to do it on the uh, open front circle or move it out back. So that would give us unlimited space. So does that mean we can still only offer five tickets as well? Well, you still have to be following the guidance. They still have to be in pods. They still have to be socially distanced. So how are you? You still need to delineate the area where they're going to be. I, I mean, I think that you need to have a number so that specifically for your graduates and then, like Joe said, others can come. Um, Kristen, are you having chairs set up in a certain designated area for, for specifically for, you know, I don't know, elderly folks and or where the graduates are going to be? Or are they standing? What's your how are you thinking about the design for that? The design is that the graduates at or the ones advancing, excuse me, would be sitting six feet apart. And then the families are being asked to bring camp chairs, lawn chairs and set up in their own pods. So, you know, the, we have a large area in the back of the school where we can still access the sound system and everything like that. So we would be able to, I mean, I'm not saying that there's going to be more than five per every child, but I just, <clears throat> just throwing it out there. Yeah, I, I think that we have to have some level of continuity here across our buildings. Um, so that that that's my feeling. And it's not saying that other people can't come. It's saying those that I, I think particularly this year, those that are going to be up front and witnessing the graduation should be the immediate families, in my opinion. But what's the pleasure of the board? And this is Oh, sorry, Kristen. <laughs> no, I was just going to ask how many um, sixth graders are advancing approximately, Kristen C? I think 28, 29. We just got an, a new one yesterday. So. <laughs> I, I was just wondering, um, sorry, if, if it would be at all helpful to delineate like the space and that would be the five tickets you know, whether it's just like a roped off area. So it was kind of priority seating for those five tickets. And then outside of that, you can bring your camp chairs and sit outside of 
out of kind of like a roped off area, as long as it didn't take away from the attractiveness of the event, I guess. But that might be a way to keep it consistent, but then people feel they can come still. So just I'm coming back to the to the calculation. Um, with those tent sizes, I, I can't agree to five tickets per student because they will never, ever uh, make it in there. And it, I guess it depends on what the messaging is. You know, if we're if we're sending a message that, yeah, you're going to get five tickets so your family can sit in a tent and then we get there and literally one fifth of the people uh, could fit in there. I mean, obviously, we're going to figure this out sooner if we're setting up chairs. Um, and just while we're sitting here, um, I threw a couple chairs in my kitchen side by side kitchen chairs side by side you know butted up similar to like what i'm used to seeing in a gym etc i measured it out and i got to about nine square feet per right um but 1600 divided by nine is still 177 and that is banking on the full 40 by 40 being used uh for seating so i'm concerned uh, i i would say our our goal is really should be get the graduates under the tent you know, if we can just find a way to get the graduates on a tent, and we, you know, like I said, if we, if we have space for our families to sit outside of the tent, I know what, once you get the stage in there, the stage takes up a lot of space, and it, it shrinks pretty quickly. And if we even look at graduates, uh, if they're going to be sitting close to one another, we do, we should still try to do some physical distancing, uh, you know, with our, you know, with them there. So. I, I just think we're we're focused on trying to get everybody, like I said, in this tent. And I'm just going from last year, just at Proctor, where you know we had a nice day, and we had a, all this room, all this green space for families, and there were families who were you know sitting behind cars who could still see just fine. We had a good sound system, and it was a nice day. It was you know everyone, you know people were on the, on the fence, you know about a hundred yards away, and we're still able to participate. So we were able to do everything. So I just I know we're we're kind of stuck in just the idea of just the tent and how many people, you know, we, we can get under a tent, but really it's like when you put the stage in there and the stage will have to be, you know, with some risers, it, it is going to take up some space. And if we look at really just committing to graduates and, you know, if it's pouring down rain anyways, I think we have to really look at a rain date. Um, just so. All right. With, with that, if it's only for the students, then, then honestly, I'm going to support any number between five and 10. Because I think no matter what number we look at, Seth, I think we're, we're going to have a problem where somebody's going to be upset because they don't get in a tent. And it's going to be first come, first serve. I know at Proctor, you'll have 10 family members right, right there at the gate, and they'll just line up. It's, it's no different than it was at church. You know, people run up to get the first view, and, you know, all of a sudden you're stuck in the corner. You know, it's like, well, you know, so it's just it, – it's the same sort of thing. It, and, and that's okay, but I, I think it's you – know, we really just – we have seating. We have space. We have – uh, you know, I said it, if it's a it's a terrible day when we just have a rain date planned <clears throat> for that. But I, I just think the key for the t for the tickets is that it's graduates, families that are getting in. Um, I don't know, as Kristen um, Levin said, the priority seating that it isn't someone who just likes to attend every single graduation that is at the front row. I think I think that's the purpose at this point. Can we tickets also um, that we'll have a tent for the graduates family will be set up in pod. We can accommodate for me no more than five people per um, student, five family members per student under the tent. Others are welcome, but they just can't be under the tent necessarily. Then I think you're going to have to delineate an area where they can be. Yes, for sure. So how, how do building administrators feel about that? So each graduate would get 10 tickets and then you would have another space delineated behind, let's say behind the caution tape where other people could come and watch, but from that space forward to the graduates would be for um, graduate families or those that have a ticket. Priority seating. Priority seating, VIP. Yeah, VIP. Yes, no? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were asking the admins, but yeah, good for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. good for you. All right, the, the next piece about the funding, and I just think we want to be have um, clarity with funding that um, some of the some of the senior classes have have money. I think what Poultney has about eleven thousand. Proctor has about nine something. West Rutland has what forty five three, maybe five, five, six, five or six thousand maybe. So Poultney has okay. eleven thousand twenty one dollars. Proctor has nine thousand seven hundred forty one dollars, and West Rutland has five thousand two hundred thirty one dollars. So I just wanted to be clear about funding when we talk about class trips or things like that, that those class funds should be expended first prior to any supplemental funding coming from the board. With respect to the tents, um, I think those are responsibilities of for us to, to um, provide for this year. Thoughts from the board. I support that. That sounds good. Um, you know, if it's something we can help with just because student classes didn't have, you know, last year or this year necessarily to be able to do the fundraising that they had hoped that they would need. Um, I'm all for supporting that. Um, but if they do have money in there, um, accounts, then I think it should go towards their events. Okay. Yeah, I'll support that too. Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Great. Totally and agree. I also, thank you, Seth. Kristen Whitman. Sorry, it took me a minute. <laughs> I support that. <laughs> okay. And then um, I think just the second piece, and I realize at this point it doesn't sound like it may be only one school's having prom, but I would also hope that from the year we've come from and, and some of the difficulties that our families have had, that we, if schools were having proms, we would not be ticketing them um, the way we had in the past. I know here maybe it might cost $80 to go to prom or something like that. So I, I think that those things need to be taken into consideration. Um, and I know if you're, if Polney's going to have it offsite, it's going to cost some money to do that. But I also think that we have to be conscientious and try to be inclusive of everyone this year. And eighty dollars or fifty dollars may be the reason someone can't attend prom. And uh, just just my thought. Do we have a way that we could subsidize that, Joe, or anybody who's, you know, in case that cost goes up a little bit, either because of transportation or? We, we've talked about that. We have some funds, you know, if you guys want to give us some money, we'll take it. But we have some funds internally that we, <laughs> we already said that we would, uh, you know, if it came to having to rent a place, the school's going to take care of it, not the kids. We're going to try to keep the tickets as low as possible um, just because of everything else. I mean, if we can get them to go for free and we can fund the whole thing, that'd be great. But, um, you know, they're, no, they're not going to have $80 tickets like they have in the past. You know, okay. if we can, you know, and, maybe, and maybe when we meet on the 17th, you'll have a better idea of, um, yeah, we can, have, we, can have, Joey? we can have some numbers then. So, okay. And I think that that would be helpful. Joanne. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was a concern of the junior class because it's, a, it's going to be a, grade nine through 12 and uh, the junior class, because we haven't had a chance to really fundraise and they don't want this to deplete, you know, you know, any of the, um, the funds that they have currently in their, um, you know, in their account. So if the board could help out with that, I could get more information between now and the 17th, but that definitely is a concern of the students that they don't want this to be a hardship on any of the classes given where we're at. Okay, and I, and I think that that certainly that certainly makes sense. And and if building administrators could come back then on the seventeenth with events that would need um, help, funding help, and we could discuss that. Okay, be happy to. Thank you. 
All right, is there anything else, any other questions, comments, Kristen Ross? Yeah, I just wanna, can I share my screen if, if it'll let me? Chris, I don't know if it'll let me since I'm not you, but. You should be able to. Okay, let me just try this. Um, I haven't done this in Google. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is supposed to be for the teachers. So I don't know if you can see my writing or not when this pops up, but. We can see it. We okay. can see it. <laughs> Thank you to all the teachers. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week this week. We love what you do. We wanna support you and, you know, hang in there. This has been a really tough time for everyone, but especially on your shoulders, you've been carrying a lot. So we just want you to know that we appreciate all that you're doing and continue to do. Thank you, Kristen, Kristen. That's awesome. Thank you so much. The teachers really appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. Anything else? All right, I think we made, you know, I, I, I appreciate all the work that Lisa, um, we have uh, administrator. We have somebody with their hand up. I think Marissa Holcomb raised oh, her hand. I'm sorry. Sure, go ahead. Sorry, it's actually your mother, Tammy. For some reason, it comes under her name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, that's okay. You don't know. Uh, so I just have a couple of points I wanted to just clear, make sure I'm understanding with the proms. So did we decide, did I hear you guys say that you're okay with um, inviting outside kids outside of the school to the proms so that if uh, one of the kids wanted to invite, a Pultley kid want to invite somebody from Fairhaven or West Rock or wherever that that's going to be allowed or does it have to be within the same school? No, that would be allowed, but they'd have to go through the same process and I'm assuming each building does the same just like we do here. There's a, a form to be filled out. It has to be sent uh, back to that school signed by that building administrator and forwarded to the building. If it was for the prom at Pulteney, it would have to come back to Joe to show that that student is a student in good standing. Okay. And uh, my, my just fear is we need to figure out dates soon. Um, a lot of these kids have jobs that they need to ask for those days off. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping it's not the 17th you guys are asking to have your date set because that's just kind of way too close for these kids, especially kids that have to get dresses and tuxes and everything else. So and we're everything. looking at it's probably going to be the week of the first weekend in June. So that fourth, fifth, um, again, depending on the sports and that type of stuff, what day it's on. But uh, we're going to meet with um, Dave tomorrow and try to shore up a date. But yeah, we can't do anything within the next couple of weeks. Well, that's why we looked at that date. Proctor too. So we're not going to know any what date the dance actually is for two weeks? No. I said, well, we're not doing anything for the next two weeks. It's going to be the weekend of the 5th or 4th or 5th. I don't know if it's going to be a Friday or Saturday, but it's going to be that weekend. Okay. Well, that does make a difference with work, so we just needed to figure it out. Um, and my only suggestion... You'll be the first to know, Tammy. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Um, but my other suggestion is if we do have it under a tent in a field <clears throat> that we rent a dance floor as well for the prom, because as you, you might not know this, Joe, but with high heels, that isn't, doesn't work well for dancing. <laughs> so just a thought. So if you're a Pulteney person, Joe's talking about, they're talking about having it in the atrium. Yes, I know. But in the event it okay. changes... Right, whatever we've, got, reason. Yeah, we, we've talked about that. I talked, some of the senior girls came and talked to me way back in February. Um, and that's some of the stuff we talked about. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, I've already talked to Robin. We're gonna set up a, you know, between tomorrow or Thursday, which we're gonna try to have a lot of stuff in place by the end of this week, so. Perfect. And in, as far as um, grand marches, are we still gonna be allowed to do those? Like a, a the walk down type thing. The walk downs, yes. The walk. We're going to see what we can do and out again. That might be weather permitting to see if we can do an outdoor thing with that. Okay, because by that, if it's June, so I guess I'm not understanding what the the big issue is with indoors on some of these things. Because as of June first, you can have up to 300 people inside, then that's just unvaccinated. So even if we had to move a march inside, I. I don't foresee having more than 300 people inside. 
So, Tammy, the issue is right now, one, identifying who is vaccinated, who is not unvaccinated. Uh, right. So you have one unvaccinated person per 50 square feet. So once we identify that, so just the logistics of finding. So we have been advised by the state to have as many things outdoors as possible just because of the, the logistics of dealing with vaccinated, unvaccinated individuals and the square footage. So that's why we're moving things outside. So, so I know they have to actually be spread out themselves like the unvaccinated people have to be spread out themselves you mean so maybe according, according to the, gu the guidance you have you know if an indoor event you have one unvaccinated person per 50 square feet okay. so we would have to figure what that would look like and that's why i think they're advising us to outdoor events are preferred because it, it changes the restrictions and the right. guidance yep okay thank you all right, are there, were there any other questions, comments? All right, um, I appreciate the time building administrators and Chris have put in on this. I know this is in, with everything else going on, this is time consuming. Um, and if we could just come back on the 17th, with the um, funding components, by no means when I said coming back on the 17th, did that mean waiting to that time to set dates or anything like that? I'm talking more about um, the funding piece. Um, and <clears throat> I think, you know, even at this point, you could start sending out um, guidance to uh, graduates and, and families to allow them to know that it's, you know, five tickets or, or 10 tickets so people can start to make those kinds of plans. All right. Lisa, um, we have someone with our hand up. Alina raised her hand. Okay. Alina. Hi. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the junior class advisors at Proctor. Um, we had put together a proposal that we gave to Joanne, and we would love to start making phone calls and booking some of the vendors. Um, is that something we can go ahead and start doing at this point? That, that was just my kind of my big question. Between now and the 17th, can we start um, actually going ahead and scheduling uh, the vendors, or should we wait until the 17th to do that? No, you can you can start scheduling. Just work with Joanne. Okay, okay. I just wasn't sure because of the if the funding piece wasn't going to be decided till later. I wanted to make sure that we're going to stay within whatever budget we're allowed to use. Yeah, I would work work with Joanne. I think I will work closely, and if there's an issue, we'll, we'll address that. Okay. I mean. Okay. Start. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much for giving up another evening. And uh, I will see you on the 17th. And a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. I'll second. And I will take your vote by your signing off. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank everyone. you, good night. Chris, I made some notes too, so I don't know if you'll need them if you're gonna give the recording to 